For this first hair masking technique, we'll be working on the JPEG called Hair Masking 1, which you'll find in the resources folder. And hopefully over the next few tutorials, I'll be answering a few questions which photographers, designers and retouchers have wanted the answers to, or at least the best technique for, and that's how to mask out hair. Now this technique is probably the easiest one to use, and it definitely works best with when you've got a high amount of contrast between the hair and the background. Now although Rebecca has blonde hair on a light background, there's not too much light bouncing off it. In other words, there's enough contrast between this darker hair here and the white background. So this image definitely lends itself to this first hair masking technique. Now the first thing I do with this technique is if I come to my Pars palette, we can see, we can see that I've already depatched this image. And if I zoom right in, I'll follow the path along. So I've depatched the image a few pixels in, or two or three pixels in from the outside of the edge of the body. It follows along the edge of the image, comes up along the inside and around the arm. Now, when it comes to this part of the shoulder here, where you can't see the edge of the shoulder, that doesn't matter because this hair is going to be covering it in the mask anyway. So what I've done is I've imagined where the shoulder is going to be running. And so I've followed the path around this imaginary line. And when I've come to the hairline, what I've done is I've made sure that the path runs nice and deep along the inside of the hair, making sure that I haven't captured within this path any of the studio background. And then it follows nice and deep around, around the hairline, up around the top of the head. And when we come back to a, a sharp edge, such as the ear or the, or the jaw, and that's where I've gone and followed the path along accurately along the edge of the body again. So just for now, I'll deselect the path back into my layers palette. Now the first thing I want to do is duplicate my background. So I hit Command J, and then I'll create a new layer on top of that. Now I want to fill my new layer with a fairly dark color. So I'm going to click on my foreground color to bring up my color picker. Now my personal preference has always been a fairly dark gaudy green, and I'll explain why in a second. So I'll click in the middle of my green spectrum and just select a fairly dark color, a fairly dark green like that. Click OK. Now this dark green is my foreground color. So I'll option delete to fill my new layer with this dark green. And I'll drag this new layer underneath my duplicated layer. Now the reason why I've picked a fairly dark gaudy color is because as will become evident a little bit later on, this will be the background color under which Rebecca's hair will be sitting. So with this color, if, there's, if there are going to be any flaws in, in my mask, it will show up with this dark green as opposed to some other color I might pick, such as a dark orange or something along those lines, which may not show up all the flaws. Now I'm going to double click on my quick mask here, and it's going to bring up my quick mask options. Now what I like to have is selected areas ticked, and I personally like to also have a, a fairly dark green color as my quick mask color. And my opacity is at 100%. Now you don't have to have the same options as me, and you may have some other options which you prefer, but this is what I like. Anyway, so I'll tick OK. So I'll just untick my quick mask here. Select my top layer, come to my paths, command click on my path, knowing that the last time I made a selection, it had a feather radius of one, and that's what I'm after. If you haven't got that, then you make a selection, command D to deselect, by selecting your, your path, and of course, coming up here to this little arrow and selecting, make a selection, and make sure your feather radius is at one. Back to my layers. And with my top layer selected, I'm going to add a layer mask. So now I have a mask of just those solid areas in Rebecca's body. Now I'm going to mask out the hair. So I'll turn off my green layer just so I can see my background. I'll select my background. Now I come up to Select, Color Range, and you'll see my cursor has become this little eyedropper tool. So now I select the background by clicking on it, and the background has turned green. But I need to ensure that all of the background is selected, so I'm going to Add to that selection by holding down the shift key and clicking on various points around the background just to ensure that I have indeed selected all of the background. Now if I was working on a brunette on a light background, then there'd be a high amount of contrast between the hair and the background. In which case I'd need to begin with my fuzziness slider right up to the right hand side, starting at 200. And there'd probably be enough contrast there to get a good mask of that dark hair. However, because we're dealing with a blonde, and there's not much of a difference between the blonde hair and the background, we need to increase the contrast in order to bring as much of that hair in as possible. So to do that, I need to grab the fuzziness slider and slide it to the left. And you'll see that now that the hair is coming into the picture. 
Now, the thing with this particular image is that aside from all this wispy hair, which we have to be very delicate in bringing in, we also have this top of the head here, which is quite a defined line. So what we may have to do is to make two passes with the color range in order to get a good effective mask. So what I'm going to do for starters is I'm going to just work on the top of the head here. So I'm going to bring my fuzziness slider further to the left to make it a, a fairly harsh contrast. And that looks pretty good. However, you'll see that down here with the wispy hair, it's a little too extreme, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. So I'm going to click OK. I need to invert this selection now. So Command Shift I to invert that selection so the background is no longer selected and we've selected the hair. I'll switch on layer two, select my layer mask on layer one. Command Space Bar, click and drag just to zoom in a little bit closer to the top of the head. And if I increase my brush size a little bit with my right bracket key, and with an opacity of 100%, so I'll hit double zero, I'm going to run this brush over the top of the head. Just like this. Command H to hide that selection, because those marching ants were a little bit distracting. And once again, I'll just run the brush over this top of the head, just to ensure that I, that I have the full selection and I have, that I'm bringing in all the hair. And that looks good. Command zero to fit to window. Now this selection that I have currently have, if command H to bring this selection back again so I can see what I'm doing. And this selection is probably a little too extreme for this, this finer hair here. So I'm going to deselect, command D to deselect. Once again, switch off layer two, select my background, come up to select, color range, click on the background, and shift click on a few other points just around the background just to ensure that I have all of the background selected. Now this is a bit harsh around here, this section of the hair, so I'm going to bring my fuzziness slider to the right, reducing the contrast to about here, looks pretty good, and click OK. Command Shift I to invert that selection, switch on my green layer, select my layer mask, increase my brush size, and run the brush over that section of the hair. Command H just to hide those marching ants. And I'll run over the brush a little more over these areas to ensure that I have captured as much of this hair as possible. Now at this point we have to be a little bit more delicate because this hair is very fine and we don't need to bring in too much of it because then it will look a little harsh and a little messy. I'll zoom in a little closer, reduce my brush opacity to say about 30%, so I'll hit the 3 key, and just go over those areas which probably need to be delicately brought back into the picture. And it's always a good idea to occasionally switch off your green layer just to see what the original looks like and to see how far you need to go. At this stage, we've done a pretty good job of bringing in as much of the hair as we possibly can. So now's a good time to focus on those areas which didn't really come into the mask, perhaps because the hair was a little too light and a little similar in color to the background. And if I hit Command H, we can see that I've had this selection in operation the entire time. So I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect that. Command space by click and drag to zoom in on some areas. And you'll see that in this area here, for instance, some of the hair didn't come in and we've got a few little green patches which are sneaking their way through. So in this instance, we can paint in some fake hair. To do this, we need to go to our brush options here and tick Shape Dynamics, which gives us this tapered edge brush stroke. And keeping with our low opacity brush, a uh, 30% is pretty good at this stage, we can artificially brush in some strands of hair. And you can see I'm creating these lovely strands of hair with this tapered edge effect. If they seem a little extreme, you can always reduce the opacity of the brush. So let's try 10% by hitting the one key. And if I just paint a brush stroke off to the side here, you can see the effect. It's very subtle, yet realistic, but we don't want that particular strand there. So I'll hit Command Z to get rid of that. 
And I'll just continue going over these areas which need a little bit more work. So here we are finished, and of course, it's up to you how much time you want to spend just perfecting this mask with those little fine brush strokes. And that may depend on how large the finished image is meant to be, and what kind of background will be sitting behind this image. And so that's how you can mask out hair using Color Range.